Okay, tutorial number seven. Um, we're going to look at a problem, um, an equilibrium problem, where we can use a simplifying assumption to help us solve for x. Um, this is a problem from your textbook. So we have here a decomposition reaction, and this is phosgene gas decomposing into carbon monoxide and chlorine. And we've got some given information here. Um, KEQ is 2.2 times 10 to the minus 8. Um, and we're given the initial concentration of the COCl2, the phosgene gas. So 1.5 moles per liter is that concentration to start out with. And we're asked, what are the concentrations of carbon monoxide and chlorine at equilibrium? Um, so let's take a look. We'll make a little ice table. We'll see what makes this question different from the previous one that we looked at. Um, I always do the same thing here. So why don't we do this? and wow. so I'm going to make us a little table and we've got um, some information here they didn't even make us calculate the concentration they just gave it to us so the concentration of COCl2 initially is 1.5 moles per liter ICE um, nothing else is added to the container initially, or they would tell us so. So the concentration of carbon, woo, the concentration of carbon monoxide, CO, and the concentration of Cl2 are both zero moles per liter to begin with. Um, because these are zero, we know that the reaction is going to be shifting from left to right. So the concentration of COCl, COCl2 will decrease by X and the concentrations of CO and Cl2 are both going to increase by some value x. And it's a one to one to one ratio here, so there are no coefficients required in the change line. Um, so at equilibrium for COCl2, the concentration will be 1.5 minus x, and the concentrations of carbon monoxide and chlorine will both be x. Okay, so that's um, that was a quick setup for our ice table for this question. And since we're not given any of the equilibrium concentrations, we need to use our KEQ expression to help us. So the equilibrium constant expression will be the concentration of CO times the concentration of Cl2 divided by the concentration of COCl2. Um, we can substitute in the values from our equilibrium line in our ice table, and we can substitute in the value we've got for KEQ. So 2.2 times 10 to the minus 8 equals um, x times x divided by 1.5 minus x. Um, so I can simplify that a little bit. Um, much like in our last example, we have an x squared term on in the numerator and in the denominator we have an x and that means in order to solve for x we'd have to use the quadratic equation. What makes this question different is that we can avoid the quadratic equation by um, using our understanding of the equilibrium constant really to help us. That's what we're doing here. Um, this equilibrium constant is very small. It's much smaller than the constant we had in our last example. And a small equilibrium constant means the amount of products um, compared to reactants is going to be very small. So we'll have way, 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 way fewer products present at equilibrium um, than we will reactants. X is, this value here is going to be much, much smaller than this value over here. Um, we know that because this number, this equilibrium constant is known. So we can perform that little test I alluded to last time where we take KEQ and we're going to multiply it by a thousand. And what I get when I multiply KEQ by a thousand is 2.2 times 10 to the 5 minus 5. <laughs> 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's a pretty small number. The important thing is so 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5 is much smaller than 1.5, which is our initial concentration. That means that x is going to be really small, 
And so we consider 1.5 minus x. If x is very, very, very small, then 1.5 minus x is going to be approximately equal to 1.5. So um, when, when we work our way through the question, I can show you what I mean by that, if that's sounding a little bit weird. But it's like if you have a million dollars and someone takes away a penny um, from your stash, you're probably not going to notice. Um, so think about it in those terms. So 1.5 minus x is going to be pretty much 1.5. Um, so, we're going to make a simplifying assumption. We can't ever simplify an x that's multiplied or an x squared. We're looking for terms like this, where we have some number plus or minus an x, where the x is going to be really small. So that's the x that we are able to avoid because of the simplifying assumption that we made over here. So we're saying 1.5 minus x is pretty much equal to 1.5. So we end up with an expression that looks like this. 2.2 times 10 to the minus 8. Um, and by the way, this multiplying by a thousand business, it's a ground rule. It's just a way for us to um, to make a decision about whether or not it's okay to ignore that x. All right. So it's just it's it's based on people's experience solving equilibrium problems and how the math works out. So it's not. I don't want you to think of it as something mysterious. Um, if we want to solve for x then, uh, so x squared, 2.2 times 10 to the minus 8 times 1.5 is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 8. Um, we'll take the square root of both sides and find that x is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. So now I want to just before we go on and do something with x, I want to come back over to this expression over here. So we compared KEQ times 1,000 to the initial concentration. It was much smaller than the initial concentration, so we make this assumption here that 1.5 minus x is approximately equal to 1.5. So let's check that out. 1.5 minus x, uh, we've just determined that x is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. And if you do that subtraction, we get 1.4998. And that is approximately equal to 1.5. So our assumption here is pretty good. We have another way we can um, check it in a minute. Um, but this is um, sort of proof um, for your eyes that if x is small, this subtraction will give us 1.5. Um, so x 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, the question asked us for the concentrations of carbon monoxide and chlorine, and our ice table tells us that those concentrations are each equal to x. So we've already answered the question. So therefore, the concentration of carbon monoxide is equal to the concentration of chlorine, which is equal to x, which is equal to 1. Point, that's not a very nice one. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter. And one last check that we can do, just to give us maybe some confidence, is to compare, um, take those concentrations we got and sub them back into our KEQ expression. Uh, so the concentration of CO, the concentration of Cl2, divided by the concentration of COCl2 and that equals um, so 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 squared because those two on top are the same as one another and in the denominator we can even sub in 1.4998 um, because 1.5 minus x is the concentration of COCl2 at equilibrium. And uh, what we get for KEQ, we sub that in, I get 2.1 uh, times 10 to the minus 8. That is very close to the actual KEQ we were given, which is 2.2 times 10 to the minus 8. The difference between them, um, if you have a difference just in the final decimal place, um, that's you know very reasonable given the rounding that we've been doing along the way. So that means we did a good job and that our assumption was valid in this case. 
So over here is our answer. And down here, we're just checking to see if um, our assumption was a good idea. So there are more questions you can try that are like this, where you can make a simplifying assumption on page 457. Um, we did number 71, so you can try maybe number 72, and they continue on the next page. Um, there are about 10 that you can try. So enjoy. <laughs>